About a year ago, I came up with a concept. What if I was restricted to a specific area and had to achieve a goal in order to move on to the next area? The concept was really intriguing to me because it reminded me what it used to be like to unlock and explore a new area in RuneScape when I made the jump from free-to-play to members back in 2005. How could I do this and turn this account into one of the best accounts in the game for PvP? Welcome to Gridlocked, where I am confined to a certain area until I achieve the goal within that area. Once I achieve the goal within that area, I am able to move on to the next area, of course also being allowed to visit previously unlocked areas. The ultimate goal of this series is to create the strongest account in PvP. That means getting an Infernal Cape and being able to hit the 4747. The only rules for this series are as follows. I am not allowed to leave the area until the goal of that specific area is achieved, and I am not allowed to take donations. There are five areas areas or regions in this series that I have to overcome. The goal for each region is as follows. Region 1, which is my starting region, I have to achieve the Major Arena 2 cape. Region 2, I have to achieve the Fire cape. Region 3, I have to beat Monkey Madness 2. Region 4, I have to beat Dragon Slayer 2. And Region 5, I have to get a Quest cape. All this starting from a level 3. Once I achieve a goal within a region, I am able to move on to the next region and reap the benefits of that region. And the most important thing to know is that I am not able to actually use the Grand Exchange until region 4. So this series is going to be challenging for me from the second that I get locked within the first region. With all of this in mind, let's begin our journey. Within Region 1, I have access to Edgeville, Edgeville Monastery, Edgeville Dungeon, and of course, anywhere within the wilderness. But, I'm only able to loot within the actual wilderness itself, so anything that's not within the wilderness, I'm just not going to loot. I can still utilize the NPCs within Edgeville, I'm just not going to take any loot that any of the NPCs would drop, or any other players would drop. There is only one thing that we need to do before we start our series. We need to go and do one Slayer task so we unlock the ability to do Wilderness Slayer. Plus, I am dropping all of the items that I get from the start, not using any of it. Our only Slayer task that we need to do is Goblins. Alright, let's go get them. There we go. Finally done. Now I can actually start this. Everyone's doing beginner clues, dude. And I'm gonna even drop the gem too. I'll just get another one. Because I know you get it for free but I just want to be able to buy it. And we are officially in Region 1. First thing we have to do is go looting. So I'm thinking the best place to loot in the beginning is going to be by the piers. I'm just going to have to be like a Hawkeyes with this. All I'm really trying to get at first is food, things like bolts, so amethyst arrows, dragon bolts E, because all that stuff is going to be able to sell for a decent amount of GP to the shop. You know what? I'm going to kill my target. <laughs> just die bro <laughs> just die i want whatever loot yes there we go first official kill on this account the kicks oh my gosh he actually had a lot looting bots are dumb bro they're really dumb i could show you me looting for like two hours but i really didn't get anything great so we're just gonna go ahead and skip to the parts that matter oh yeah there we go oh yes it worked <laughs> oh Oh my gosh! One thing I'm going to use, which is going to be very good for me in my pursuit for 43 prayer, is the Wilderness Altar, because I can use bones on them, and they act as a normal gilded altar, and in addition, there's a 50% chance that the bones that I use on it just do not get used up, so I can use the bones again. Yes! <laughs> no! What? I really considered making this the respawn point and just putting 5 mil on the account, but I feel like that would already cheat it. So even though it makes sense in the confines of the series, I'm just going to have it so Lumbridge is a spawn for now because eventually I'm going to want to use that as my spawn anyway. So it's not going to make sense to do it like that. I really hope I don't die again, bro. Yeah, that's literally best in slot mage. I should bank this, but I'm going to not. And oh, <laughs> yes, bro. What is that? Is that black dehyde? That's black dehyde. That's actually really big. I'm going to not want to die here, though. And an honorable blessing as well. The only sad part is this is going to take 10 years. But, dude, this is, like, really good for later on. So, <laughs> it's really, really good that I got Black Dehyde. I'm sure there would have been plenty of opportunities. But the fact that I'm getting it already is super nice. Oh. Red Dehyde. Oh, I really needed that. 
I really needed that red dehyde. It's been like three hours of looting now. So what I'm going to do is get all of the items that I looted, like the stackable items, and sell it to the Rogue General Store in the Wilderness because they buy things for the high alk value. They're one of the few shops in the game to actually do that. So it's going to be good for me to get early runes. All right, so I came to a free-to-play world because they only go up to level 22 in the free-to-play world. Of course, in the members' worlds, they go up to level 100+. plus. So I got to be really careful there, but... For here, I'm good. 100 GP. How much does these buy for? 294 each. They literally do sell for 294 each. I pro I'll probably just sell five at a time. How much do these sell for each? Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. This is decent. This is decent money making. Yeah. That would have been bad. All right. I just came to a free to play world for this. I don't trust this dude. I don't trust like, going back in there with 47k risk. So I'm going to go bank this to make sure I'm good. All right. There we go. Now that we're safely here. Woof. All right. 46k. That is a very, very decent starting point. So I want to go to the Mage Bank, and to do that, I need to either get a knife or a weapon that can slash through webs. Now, I could just get an Iron Mace right here and be done with it, but I don't really want to use any of the Edgeville item spawns or anything in Edgeville. I just want to use Edgeville for the bank. So that leaves me with a few options. There's a Steel Dagger spawn I know of. Actually, a few of them. There is a Steel Sword spawn I know of. There is a Black Dagger spawn I know of, although that's in the Lava Dragon Maze, so that's just probably not going to happen and there is an iron scimitar spawn i know of i just need one of those to get into the mage bank and then there is an unlimited knife spawn right outside the mage bank so this should be the first thing there's the steel sword yeah all right so i don't actually need to get a steel dagger but i just want to see if the steel dagger is there anyway and there is the steel dagger plus there's also a steel dagger spawn up here oh there could be loot up here oh there is look at that and a crystal seed <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to use that for, like, anything, but that's interesting. <gasps> Ooh! Ooh, is like a little war right here? I think there was. This is an absolute gold mine. Oh, my gosh. Rune crossbow. And I died. Wow. All right, this guy is just killing everyone. I'm just going to log out. Honestly, I'm going to log out and wait. Honestly, this will last us for a day. Decent amount of time. I think this is literally everything that I would even need for Mage Arena 2. So I really got to make sure that I can go and bank this. I should be fine though. So I could just grab an extra knife right there. Or I could just come right in here and then get an unlimited knife spawn. I think you just have to drop it every time. Yeah, you can literally just get an unlimited knife spawn. So let's fill up my inventory with this so I don't have to worry about knives pretty much ever again. So the unfortunate thing is that I am only able to get one staff from the wilderness, and that is an earth staff from the lava maze. So unfortunately, that means I am going to have to waste a lot of my runes. It shouldn't be terrible overall, and that should be all of the runes. Now I just need to go and get the staffs. I could use a burning amulet charge, but I just don't want to waste that, so I'm just going to walk there. Well, if a bunch of people are fighting, I may as well sit here and wait for some loot hey he died cool maybe i can get a staff of water now <laughs> nice all that loot come on <laughs> just loot it oh no all right well i mean even if he does kill me bro you're not gonna kill me like that i have an idea i bet i could kill this guy let's get him one banged here I just need to hit him once. There we go. Watch. I'm going to get him killed. Oh, dude. Come on. He had a zero. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It freaking worked. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that actually worked. That's like legit everything. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go and get an extra staff or two. All right, there we go. Now we have our staff of earth spawn. All right, here we go. That's all I need for now. All right, let's get out of here now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to touch these Sarah Brews or Restores until Mage Arena 2. I really don't think that they're worth using until then. So what we're going to do right now, since I actually got a Staff of Fire from that, we can go ahead and get the best Mage gear. All right, so this should be our best gear for now. I don't actually need to use any fire runes until I die and lose this inevitably. So this should be our gear for now. We're going to go to Lava Dragons, and Lava Dragons should be good for HP experience, 
prayer experience, magic experience, some GP, and maybe even a looting bag. All right, so, because I don't want to walk through a literal minefield because I'm at 11 HP and these guys can whack that very easily. I'm just going to go ahead and kill them right here for now, which it's kind of dangerous the spot I'm in because PKers can come and kill me. But I don't really think there's going to be that many PKers. All right, so I just got 13 magic, and uh, I did not even manage to get this guy to one-fourth. So I'm just going to suicide, get more runes, and come back, because that's probably faster than walking all the way back. All right, this is a good way to get my loot. So I just got to far cast this, and this guy will be afraid for his freaking life. Then I just walk over here and grab my loot. There we go. All right, so now we can just go back to killing it. Slowly but surely now. This is my first lava dr Oh, no. Okay, this is my first Lava Dragon kill. I want to see how much prayer I get from the first bone. This took so long, though. Onyx Bull Tips! Oh my gosh, I'm bailing. I'm bailing, bro. That is like a hundred... Yeah, it's a hundred K. Right there. And I can go and use this on the altar as well. So I have a chance at getting double the amount of XP from that. So, yeah, I actually just realized that uh, these are only 600 GP... One high alt, so <laughs> they're not 101k, sadly. Let's get some good use out of this. Never mind. All right, second lava dragon kill. What do we get? Imagine I just imagine I got a visage, dude. It'd be wild. Right, there we go. I want to get 45 prayers as fast as I possibly can. There's a few ways I can go about doing that, so I don't think I'm gonna actually get it from lava dragons overall. Oh, I got an adamant plate body, and I really don't want to die here, so. I'm going to hop worlds. This is good because it's a 10k arc. And the thing is, if someone comes and attacks me, even if I die, there's a chance that they might leave the Staff of Fire. Because technically, the Staff of Fire is worthless to everyone else. But it's not to me. If that even happens, we'll see. This guy's playing me, dude. What the heck? I might win, though. I don't think I will, but I could. Yes! <laughs> uh, no. I'm just going to smile. Rip. Very close. Well, I'll come back and get it. Although, they, they do regenerate HP fast, so watch it be full HP when I get back, bro. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to see if I can get a task of Lava Dragons. No. Sad. All right, well, I'll eventually do the Slayer task anyway when I get range. But for now, may as well just buy an Enchanted Gem. Oh, gosh. This guy can actually attack me! Ooh. All right, I'm going to sit there and wait for a little bit. All right, I waited quite a few minutes, so I hope this guy's not sitting here waiting for me. Are you kidding me? He is. Come on, bro. <laughs> he actually killed my dragon and just took over. That's really sad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Am I good now? Yeah. That's right, buddy boy. Oh, more Onyx sad tips. Oh, we're a longsword. That's actually going to be a really good elk. Oh my gosh, no! Oh, I'm gonna die! Crap! He ran out of run energy. No freaking way, please, please, please. Yes, yes! All right, that should be fine for now. 1,200 more runes to go cast. All right, that was the last dragon for now. I got 35 magic, 20 prayer. Uh, I'm going to go for my next plan since I need to get range up. I think my best way of doing that is to get a Dorgish and crossbow and some bone bolts. And the best way of doing that is to kill people at revs because I think it's what a Venezuelan normally brings to go and kill those rev imps. So let's go and test the theory out a bit. Probably just buy like 50, I think, because it's a decent amount. Yeah. That's a lot. I kept hopping around to try to find looters, and every now and then I decided to kill the revs. Oh my gosh, I actually got a drop. And that guy's gonna get dropped. Bro. Stop giving me these. Oh wait, I can just one-hit this guy. Yep. Dang! Oh no. <laughs> Shit. What's on the ground for me? <gasps> Dude! Like most of it, my mind runes and everything too. So what I'm going to do is sit here and loot all of these chaos runes and just use these because it's really cheap and I have a decent amount of uh, throwaway food as well. All right, there we go. So decent amount of inventory. Let's go and get any looters we can now. I have needed this pretty badly, bro. <laughs> yes. This should be a big chance to get a kill. Yes! Yes! Okay, good. I'm going to get whatever he had and get at it. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. 
Holy crap. I really hope I don't get PK'd. <gasps> Glory, I really, really hope I don't get PK'd. I really need to get everything and get out. Come on. He had so much. He had so much. You don't have space in your living bag? Ah, uh, crap. That's good. I don't even care. That's good. I'm leaving. And we're out. <sighs> Sigh of relief. Now we can check how much we got. Are you kidding me? Holy crap! Why did you have that much? Oh my gosh! That was after two hours of trying to find looters to PK. And the only things that are really good in that that I could actually use are the Ethereum bracelets because I could use those for Alks as well as just use the bracelets in the cave. Although I'm probably not going to risk it. And while the Ether was a really nice PK, it's not worth that much. I mean, it'll probably go for a decent amount of Alk price, but I'm not even going to be worried about the Ether because I'm not making my money from the Ether. As far as I'm concerned, that was just a nice little bonus that I don't really even need because there's going to be so many more things I need to do for money making. And now that we have a decent starting point, the goal of next episode is to get at least 37 prayer because with 37 prayer, I'm going to be able to take on a lot more. Plus, I actually have a few tricks of how I'm going to get prayer up practically for free.